Now, I believe that each one of you here has a TED Talk within you. I believe all of you have an idea that's worth sharing. And in the next 30 minutes, if you don't already know what that idea is, you're going to get the frameworks, the tools, the techniques to actually figure that idea out. And those who stay till the end, there's also a little bit of a gift that I'll share. Now, in the chat, tell me, what's your favorite TED Talk? What are some of the TED Talks that you all watch, that you like, that you enjoy? Rosemary says, Brené Brown. The Power of Vulnerability. Who else? Sandhya likes Amy Cuddy. Amy Cuddy has a really nice talk on the power pose. In fact, I did that before my talk here. Just when you raise your hands like this and act like you're a superhuman, you just feel more confident in your presentation. Angela Duckworth, Tony Fadell. One of my favorites is Simon Sinek, where he says, start with why. And now... Why do you want to give a TED Talk? So we all mentioned a few of our TED Talk's favorite speakers, but I want to know from you all. I have 20 people here, 20 future TED Talks in this meeting room. Why do you want to do a TED Talk as well? Or if you want to unmute yourself, feel free to raise your hand and you can speak. But I'm getting some answers. So Rosemary wants to teach people that forgiveness education works. Dan Walker, to move towards a more just and joyful society. So some of the reasons I'm feeling is you have an idea that you feel like the world needs to hear. Anybody else? What are some reasons you are here? Why do you want to give a TED Talk? Sandhya wants to influence and build confidence. Okay. To share a story. Yeah. For me, I think from the earliest time I remember, I've always wanted to be on that red circle. This, this TED Talk red circle, right? From, I think, high school onwards, our teachers used to show us brilliant TED Talks, brilliant speakers, brilliant ideas. And that inspired me in high school to one day want to stand on that red circle and present something. Now, what that idea was, I had no clue. I, I did not know what I wanted to speak about or what even the world wants to hear from me. Until one day, about six years ago, I got an email. Danish? we would like to welcome you to our TEDx talk event. I'm like, okay, maybe they're inviting me to come participate. And then the next line said, would you be open to being a speaker? That was shocking. I was, I was in awe. I was nervous. I was scared. This was six, seven years ago, right? This is before I actually was a public speaker. And I did not know what I would talk about. So it was really confusing, really scary. I spent the next few days before replying to this email, just researching how to come up with topics for TED Talks. I started talking to friends. Hey, what topic of a TED Talk should I talk about? And the internet had every single thing out there. There was so much things on what, how to come up with TED Talks. And it was very overwhelming. I did not make many much progress until I actually worked with a coach. And I sat down with this coach and I said, look, I need to give a TED talk in three months. I don't know what I need to talk about. And so working with this coach, we actually figured out a framework, like a formula. You put in X and you put in Y and you get your answer. And that's exactly what I'm about to share with you. What that formula was, how it worked for me, and how it can also work for you. And the framework is very simple, as frameworks should be. 
Think about it as two circles of a Venn diagram. On one side, you have the speaker, and on the other side, you have the topic. So the speaker is you, and this is the topic that you might want to come up with. And under the speaker, you want to figure out what are your core identities? What are your core strengths? What are your passions? What are you a subject matter expert in? Those are the three or four questions that you need to ask yourself and start writing down inside this first circle. And then the second circle is, what are the problems you're interested in solving? Or what are the problems you're already solving today? Or what are some of the opportunities that you're, again, very passionate about? And this is a brainstorming. So when you're brainstorming, the biggest advice when you're brainstorming is you just write stuff down. You do a brain dump. Whatever comes to your mind, you start doing a brain dump on a piece of paper, in Apple Notes, in a Google Doc, whatever you like, you start putting everything together. Once you put your list of left and right together, then you actually try and figure out where is the overlap? Where are places where my subject matter expertise actually overlaps with a problem I'm interested in solving? And then get rid of the other stuff. For example, one of my core expertise is I'm a really good long distance cycler. I like biking. I like road biking on mountains and hills. But there's no problem that I'm interested in solving that overlaps with it. So I might not give a TED Talk topic on that. On the other hand, for my particular scenario with my TEDx talk, the other thing that I wrote down in my core identity was I had a fear of public speaking. I was nervous. I was a recent college grad scared of going on stage. And one problem I really wanted to solve was helping other people overcome this fear, just like how I did. I had my own journey. And I felt that was a very, like a, like a key and a door lock. It just clicked both the left and the right. That's what we want to find. So why don't we do this right now? I'm gonna give you all three minutes. Take a piece of paper or open a notes app on your phone or your laptop and do a quick brain dump in three minutes. I want you to write down as a speaker, what are your core identities, strengths, or what are you a subject matter expert in? Give me a list of five to 10 things here. And then write down five to 10 problems or opportunities you're interested in solving. And then we'll have a volunteer to share theirs with us. Let's begin. If you have any questions, feel free to put in the chat.
30 seconds left. For those who joined late, let me just give you the opening that I shared with you all. The idea here is to come up with a TED Talk worthy idea. And at the beginning, I said that everyone here has a TED Talk worthy idea within them. Everyone has an idea that's worth sharing to the world around them. And to come up with that, there is this framework that we're working on to actually help us distill that and come up with that idea. And so we just spent three minutes writing down what we think are our core strengths and problems we are passionate about. And so if someone can raise their hand inside Zoom, I'm gonna pick on a volunteer to actually help us fill one out together. So I see Pravin Kaipa. Okay, Pravin. Go ahead, I'm gonna add you as Spotlight. And let's do this together. So right. tell me, what are your core identities or strengths? Or what are your so subject matter? I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Or what are you a subject matter expert in? Tell us. So um, I have my master's in education. I teach uh, middle school special ed right now. I taught English before that for eight years. Um, and I'm dual credentialed in both English and special education. Um, and I'm also neurodiverse myself. Um, so I understand kind of that experience of being uh, a person of color, also being neurodiverse and kind of coming from a special ed and English slash theater background. So I love that. That's a very good list. And what are some problems? your interest in solving or opportunities you're excited about? So um, what I love about AI is the ability to create um, things at scale or to be able to quickly make ideas realities. Um, but what I'm, I see as a problem is that a lot of people aren't aware of AI and then a lot of people aren't aware of AI as a tool to help people who are not traditionally thought of as creative or not given the opportunities to be creative, um, to be more creative at and like share their words and raise their voices and be heard. Okay. And so where's the overlap here? Tell me about those. So the two. Sorry, go ahead. Tell me about the overlap. Um, so the overlap here is I, I have been experimenting with AI. Um, sorry, that's my school bell. Um, as a as a teacher for the last couple of years with my students with special needs. And so I've I've seen them um, view AI not just as something that's like an esoteric, like uh, you know, pie in the sky idea, but something that they're like, Mr. Kaipa, it's like a dog, you know, you, you try to give your dog tools and you want your dog to do something for you, but you got to be able to be creative and be flexible with it. And then you can help it grow in a way that makes your life uh, easier and makes makes you happy. So I see it as an overlap between um, who I am as somebody. I, I have three kids as well. So I have a teenager right now who's in middle school. And then I have a little girl, Ruby, who's three years old, and a little girl, Aurora, who's one years old. So my goal is to help them be um, creators not just consumers. And so I want AI to be something that helps them bridge that gap between um, just consuming content, you know, on YouTube or TikTok or whatever they're using in 10, 15 years from now, um, mm -hmm. to being somebody who can tell their story as like a brown, I have two brown girls and a brown boy. So I wanna make sure that their authentic voice is heard. Great. Seems like I felt like you already had this almost like a TED Talk topic idea. Did you have this coming before this in this talk? Yeah, that's why. I mean, it's kind of serendipity here um, mm -hmm. that you're you're doing this today. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm your plant in the crowd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. Oh, seems like it's almost ready. What I did want to see was just listing down a little bit more problems. But sure. I like this regardless. Cool. I know Angela also raised her hand. Maybe we can get her for the next one. 
let's continue. So I hope everyone got to do something just like that. And I'm going to modify the framework a little bit as well, because not everyone here wants to give a TED talk. In fact, some of us simply want to use this TED talk framework to actually give a workshop inside my company or at all hands talk about my vision of the next six months for my team. Or I'm at a corporate conference, maybe at a developer conference, and I want to give a 15-minute, 10-minute presentation. Well, this framework can also help exactly with that. And the only modification there will be is you're going to add another circle. And that circle is who is the target audience? Who will be there? Who wants to listen to you? So in a corporate setting, for example, I, let's say, I'm at an AI conference. OpenAI is having a developer day, and I'm going to be talking about some of the latest functionality or the roadmap coming soon for OpenAI. I need to figure out who my target audience is, who is going to be listening to me. And then you have to work the other way around. You have to then figure out what are the problems and opportunities that my target audience is actually interested in. Forget about now you. Now you think about it from a target audience perspective. What are their problems? What are their opportunities that they are paying attention to? And then hopefully it overlaps with the problems and opportunities that you already are interested in as well. And then you come to the first one again, which is your core identity. Are you a subject matter expert in this particular topic? So is there anyone who might have a non-TED talk, but something like this where for a work, for a conference that they might need to give and we can do one together with them? Anyone here on a non-TED talk type of topic? Hey, no one wants to share something like that? Then, okay, then let's go to Angela, who had raised her hand before. Angela, do you want to share for yourself the first one? Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Hey, perfect. So um, I wanted to attend this talk because I was thinking about creating a course on Maven, actually. Um, so I am a communication coach and a speech therapist, and I'm also an introvert at the same time. And one problem that I'm trying to solve for people who are also introverts, maybe they're socially inexperienced or publicly inexperienced, not used to talking in front of people, and they're a working professional. I'm thinking about solving a problem of having more productive and more effective conversations. I find that people are really bad at laying out their assumptions they assume that the other person knows everything that they know and they they talk about some context or they talk about something but the other person doesn't know where they're coming from okay lots of problems i love that that's exactly where we want to be we want to write down all those problems and at the very beginning i got a little bit insights on who you are and i'm already feeling like there's already overlaps here like like a lock and a key it just overlaps we exactly want something like that. Cool. Thank you for that. Yep. Let's continue. And now if I can get... So yeah, if... The next step now is to actually use those things to actually come up with titles. It's very simple. You feel like you know who you are. You know what your problems and opportunities are. The next step in this creative process before you actually do a TED Talk is to come up with titles. And it might seem like Danish, but I don't have a TED Talk ready. It doesn't matter. The fact that you forced yourself to come up with a title, you're actually letting all those brain wires go and actually think of how it actually connects. So that's the next step. In the chat box, if people can give me titles for their overlapping Venn diagrams, what are some of the titles that come to your mind?
So for example, in my case, it was how I overcame my fear of public speaking. That was the title of my TEDx talk. What are some potential titles you might have for your topic? Rosemary says, what if forgiveness education could bring about world peace? Okay, I'm intrigued. Forgiveness and world peace together. Yeah, I would be interested in listening to that. Angela says, speaking so people listen. I like that. You're talking about speaking and listening in the same sentence. That's great. People actually speak for the sake of speaking and not for this and not focusing on helping people listen. I like that. Pravin has, what if AI could give everyone a voice? Okay, again, intriguing. Laura, I don't think your title might get approved by a TEDx talk, but if it is inside in an internal work shop in a company, sure. Eating plants and being a vegetarian. Okay. Now, if you want a shortcut, ideally you do this yourself first, but if you want a shortcut, we can use ChatGPT as well. In fact, let's take what we had here and put it inside ChatGPT to see what it comes up with. So this is my prompt. Help me craft a TEDx TED Talk topic. Here are my here's my core identities as a speaker. So I write those down. And then I write down here are some problems and opportunities I'm interested in. Again, this is a shortcut. You want to leave this as the last step. You don't want to do this at the very beginning. So oh, it just gave me a whole TEDx talk. Give me five titles instead. I want titles. From consumers to creators. Okay. I hope the teacher likes this one. And then unleashing potential. Yeah. So first you come up with your own topics. And then if you still need help with coming up with something creative, then come to ChatGPT. Again, don't rely on AI to do everything for you. Use it as a resource. And now I need one last volunteer to give me a 30 second intro of their talk. Feel free to raise your hand. A 30 second Give me like a teaser of your talk. Rosemary, I think you look ready. Let's put you on the spot. And give us, I, I liked your title about forgiveness and peace. Give me a 30 second. And your time starts now. Anger is an interesting emotion. Have you ever experienced it? What have you done with it? I'm here to tell you that there is a one simple answer to anger or to anger management that can contribute significantly to world peace. And it's a learnable attribute that is accessible to everyone everywhere, no matter what age, no matter what background, no matter when and where you were born, we can all learn about forgiveness education to create world peace. Wow. Can we give a round of applause to Rosemary? That was good. We put her on the spot. That was a good opening. Very, very well done. And that's Thank that's you. like your step number three. Once you have come up with a title, the idea is to just put you on the spot. You know, our brains, when they're in a state of stress, they actually start functioning at a very high level. So step number three is tell yourself or force yourself, I'm going to record myself and I'm going to give a 30 second opening of my talk. I'm going to give a 60 second opening of my talk. And that's going to start the creative juices from flowing. And then you go ahead 
and start writing down your TED talk or your TEDx talk or your normal presentation things. And then if you still need help focusing on your delivery skills, that's when you can say, Danish, you know what? We need more help. I have my TEDx talk ready. I need to deliver it with confidence and with influence. And well, we have a course that Akash and I, my friend, we are launching in July 15th. Rosemary was actually part of the last cohort. And a gift for all of you would be this code, $250 off. No one else is ever going to get this. When the recording is live in 48 hours, this will not work. So this is the best deal we have. And then those who are watching the recording, if you're still interested in this, feel free to email me and we'll see what we can do for you as well. So take a look at that. And that brings us end of 30 minutes. But now I'll be here for 10 more minutes for any Q&A. So to give a 60-second presentation. Would love to hear what was your major takeaway in the session as well in the comments below. And if you have any questions, please ask away. Again, feel free to raise your hand and I can pick on you or you can put it in the chat box. Next steps, very clear. We'll share the recording. Feel free to rewatch it. Or you already have step one, two, and three with you. Spend the next week really hashing down on step one, which is filling out your circles. Step two, thinking of titles. And then step three, hitting a record button on your phone, on your camera, or in front of someone and say, I'm going to give a TED Talk impromptu on this topic and you deliver. Those are the next steps if you're really serious. And then if you feel like there's something here, then you can start approaching people on, you know what, I'm interested in giving a TEDx talk. You start looking at events that are actually doing TEDx talks, organizing them, and you reach out to the organizers. Hey, I liked your theme. Here are two, three titles that I've been preparing on. Would you be interested in having me as a speaker?